Hi guys, welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to set up an automated backup for your vCenter 8 configuration, built within the native tools from VMware. You don't need anything else, just give it an SMB share or an NFS share and set up the schedule and it will create automatic backups of your configuration. Like I promised, I will show you now how to restore from those automatic backups Restore to a newly installed vCenter 8 server. Let's get into it. This is my vCenter server. As you can see here, I'm running vCenter on my fourth ESXi host. So what we're going to do is we will fail this host, shut off this vCenter and restore the configuration of this vCenter to the host, the third host with the IP 192.168.10.12 in order to simulate a scenario where your host is down, your vCenter is broken, you cannot bring the vCenter up. So you need to create a new vCenter on another host and restore the configuration. So let's check on the appliance settings because I need to make sure that my backup has been running. In the last video I showed you guys, my backup is running, it is activated. And the last successful backup from this uh, vCenter server was, let's go to the end of the, it was on the 2nd of February. Everything has been backed up. It has been successfully backed up to a share. This is an SMB share. If I click this open, I can see some details there. So this is the exact path we need to enter in order to restore the configuration when we create a new vCenter. So make sure that you have this somewhere documented or you can just recreate it, of course. It's not that difficult. The SMB stands for the protocol, the FQDN or the IP address of the server where the share is running, and then the directory in which the vCenter has to look for the configuration file, the JSON file, in order to restore it. So one thing is very important. You have to make sure that you have the correct version of vCenter installation media as where the backup is creating from. So as, I, as you can see here, I have this version of vCenter running with this build number. So when I want to restore the configuration, the backup of the configuration I'm taking from this vCenter, I need to install a vCenter server exactly with this version and this build. So let's get back into vCenter and actually to the ESXi host. This is the ESXi 03. This is the place where I will be creating that restored configuration, that disaster recovery configuration of vCenter, so to speak. And the current vCenter is running on this server. This is a vz01.vcache.lab. So I will shut this down. Wait for it to shut down. And of course, these pages will then not be available anymore. Let's see if it's still responding. Now this is gone and the appliance maintenance page is gone as well. Just to make sure the vCenter, my original vCenter, where I'm creating those automatic backups from is shut, has been shut down. It's not running anymore. Now let's go to the media. I need to mount the media, open it with Explorer. If you do, do that, the media is mounted and I will start the UI installer. Go to the Win32. You can, of course, do this also from a Linux desktop or a macOS desktop. I will do it from my Windows desktop. Click on the installer.exe and start the restore progress. So as you can see here now, there are several options you can choose from. I'm not going to install or upgrade or migrate. I'm going to do a restore. If I click on the restore icon or restore button, there are two stages. The first stage, it will deploy a new vCenter. And the second stage is it will restore the configuration from the backup files with the path we just saw in the backup. So what we'll do here is let it start with step one, stage one. Now, as you can see here, we have to enter the backup details. The backup details, that is the path I was showing you. So I've already copy and pasted it here. I will put it in here. Make sure that 
the wizard has the correct credentials to log in on that share in order to read those files. I will enter the credentials here I click on next. It will give you a review of the restore process it will do. So I will click next. Now it will ask me, where do I want to deploy this new vCenter server? I will go, I will be doing that on my third ESXi host. That's this one with the IP address ending in 12. So just copy and paste that. Because remember, my original vCenter is running on my ESXi host number four. And I will be doing the restore on a new vCenter installed on ESXi number three. So this is the IP address or the FQDN if you want to. I will let it log in with the root credentials there. Click on next. It will ask me for the certificate warning. That's fine. Now this step is very important because you need to make sure that you know that you're working from a vCenter which has been restored. So best practice is of course, keep the same name or just add restored edit. I will set the password for the new vCenter installation. I click on next and select the deployment size. According to your infrastructure, you can do a small or another option there. I will choose tiny because this is just my lab environment. And then it will connect to that host. As you can see here, it has connected to my ASXi03 host and it is presenting me the storage options. I will choose the storage option there because that's enough. And for home lab use, I will enable pin disk mode. I have nothing special there defined for network. Of course, if you have multiple networks and VLANs, you need to define them here, or you can just do that afterwards, of course. In my case, I will be setting up in the default networking configuration there. And what I'm going to do, and this is the very important step as well, you need to make sure that you will give this new vCenter, this restored vCenter server, the same IP address or FQDN host name as the old one, because in the restore process, the wizard will look for that IP address or that host name, and it will try to configure the same setting on the newly deployed vCenter. So that is had, it has to match. I will tell it that it can use the that IP address. That's the IP address of my old vCenter. So it will match what is in the backup configuration. And then the gateway, of course. DNS servers. And click on next. Just make sure that everything is correct here. You will, of course, get the resume. You can click on finish. And then the deployment of a new vCenter will start with the same IP configuration as the old one. Very important. We will let this finish and then I'll come back to you. And we are done with the first stage. That means we have a freshly installed vCenter server ready to go. Now, the next step is to restore the configuration. So let's click on continue. And it will automatically move to stage two because it knows that stage one is completed. Clicks next. And again, we can see here where our backup configuration here is, right? So we need to get that from that folder. We need to make sure that the version of vCenter we have installed is corresponding, including that build number I showed you guys earlier, is corresponding to what is in your backup because otherwise this will fail. Now let's click on next. And then you will see that there is an error because you made an error when entering those credentials you made an error when entering the username or you made an error and didn't specify the backup directory. But there is no, no, no need to worry. We will just click on, if you click on cancel here, because as you can see here, you cannot change those uh, values here, right? So basically you will think, okay, then I need to restart my whole install operation and I need to go back into the vCenter server and configuration and deployment. We're not going to do that because if this process breaks here in the deployment phase two, all we have to do is click on say cancel. And then it will ask you, do you want to close the installer? Yes, we know we want to close the installer because, hey, we cannot change any of the parameters we entered there 
and we cannot restore from the wizard now but fortunately there is a option as you can see here it will specify where to go in order to continue the restore process so in my case i have to go because vCenter is deployed it's running but there is no configuration there because we know it knows that you want it to do a restore so basically we are going to go to this url so copy that over and what we're going to do is click on copy make sure that we can go to that website is it there yes at this point it is a we are able to continue we are able to continue to restore our configuration which is in a backup file so this is fine that means that we can close down the wizard here if i click on yes the wizard will be cancelled and it's gone now we are in the browser interface connected to our newly set up vCenter server. You can see it's running on that same IP address as my previous vCenter because that's the configuration I did initially in stage one. And now I have the option to continue the restore. So if I click on restore and I can see that I still have to complete stage two, complete uh, stage one has been completed. I click on next. And then we have the option again to enter the location where my backup file is so let's do that just copy the path paste it out here and this time i need to make sure that my username and password has been entered correctly if you have encrypted your backup with a password you can enter that encryption password here let's click on next let me see if you guys can see my screen still yes Click on next and now it will say, all right, everything is fine. You can shut down the orig original vCenter server before proceeding because, well, there will be network conflicts. I will not do that. I will just click on finish. It will come up with a warning. Click on OK because the warning is basically if you start the restore process, there is no option to cancel it or pause it. So let's make sure that the restore progresses and wait for it to finish. And there we have it. After waiting a very long time, it finished the restoration process. I waited for it to start all the services. It may give you an error on the screen uh, if you're using the browser. Don't panic, let it just sit and start all the services. You can check the progress of course of the virtual machine here when you see the cpu started going down well then you know that it is nearly finished so now i refresh the page let's see if i can log in if i log in i can see that well the, from the management console perspective everything is running if i go to my vcenter page let's see if i can load up my vcenter now it's still the same uh, FQDN, of course, because the IP address is the same. So that means that my DHP reservation, DNS reservation is working. And as I can, as you can see, I can log in to vCenter. It's up and running. Let's click on login, fill in the password and see if my configuration is there. And there we are. As you can see here, the old vCenter is still there on the 13 host, but the new one, the restored one, that's the one we are running from now actually, is on the dot 12. That's, that is my third ESXi host. If I go to the third one, I can see that everything is running there. And that's how you restore your vCenter from a automatic vCenter configuration backup. That's the backup you set up using the, that automatic schedule from the appliance management interface. And these are the steps to restore it. Of course, during the restore process, when the wizard, um, when the wizard stops because you made a mistake when entering username, password or backup location, you cannot change it from the wizard. You can then, at that point, you can just, like I showed you, cancel out. No panic, you don't have to redeploy a new vCenter. Stage one has been completed. Your new vCenter is running. You just need to restore that configuration. So cancel that wizard, go into your web browser, open that configuration page and continue from your web browser. Of course, if you continue from your web browser, 
It can happen that that interface will eventually give you a timeout. It doesn't, uh, uh, don't need to panic. Go back to your ESXi host, check on that new vCenter appliance, that vCenter VM. When you see that the CPU usage has started going down, well, you know that basically all the services has been started. Go back to your web browser and open up your vCenter interface as you usually we would. Go into the appliance maintenance page, of course, make sure that everything is there as you expect it to be, that the configuration has been restored just like you wanted it to be re uh, restored. And then within the vCenter interface itself, make sure your hosts are there, your clusters, configuration, networking, and switches, etc., etc., are all there in place. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on like and subscribe. If you have a comment, leave it in the comment section below, and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. Take care and see you. Bye.